Hey guys, it's Chris. Welcome to my channel. Hope you're doing well. I hope you've had a good week. Today, I want to, like the title of the video, let you know what I've been reading recently. Maybe add something to your to-be-read list. I've had a pretty good uh, track record recently of books that I've liked for the most part. Actually, looking back, most of them are on the shorter side. So if you want a short book, uh, these are some good options. So only two out of these five books I have the physicals. The rest I got as an ebook from the library, so I don't have them with me, but that's okay. I'll just put them here. So the first book I read is called Remarkably Bright Creatures. Also, I've seen it referred to as like that octopus book, and it is literary fiction, which I don't normally read much of. So I definitely was trying something new with this one, and I'm really glad that I did. So our protagonist is named Tova. She is like a 70 year old woman, and in the past, her son died kind of mysteriously and her husband passed away uh, pretty recently. So she lives alone and she works at an aquarium and she is the cleaner, so the custodian. And as basically she befriends the octopus at the aquarium. Not only does she befriend the octopus, but they form a really close bond and then the octopus kind of has a hand or a tentacle <laughs> in helping her come to terms with her son's death so many years later and potentially offer her some closure, which sounds insane because he's an octopus in a tank, but you just have to read it and you have to trust me that it makes sense and f honestly feels kind of realistic. I mean, I don't have that many experiences with octopi, but... <laughs> so the perspective in the book switches between Tova, the old woman who works at the aquarium, the octopus who, he's not anthropomorphic, so he doesn't actually talk, but we hear his thoughts and he's super pompous, really funny and quick-witted, and he's a great time. And then Cameron, who's another character, a young man around 30. I guess that's not like a super young man, but uh, I won't tell you too much about him because I don't want to spoil anything. But really, it's just so fantastic. It's really emotional. And I'm obsessed with the octopus. Like, I just, I love him. <laughs> and I really loved having an older protagonist. I hadn't read a book where the protagonist is over 70. Um, so it was super great to see that perspective and I thought she was written really, really well. I mean, I don't have a wealth of knowledge about um, elderly women, but I, she was great to me and it was really awesome to get to know her and to see that perspective that I don't really see that often. It's a great found family, um, literary fiction, emotional, beautiful, highly recommend. You don't even need to like Octopi to read it. It's really fantastic and I'm just really glad that I read that book. Check out Remarkably Bright Creatures. I highly recommend it. So next up, I read one of the books I got from the book haul with Benji, What Moves the Dead. I was in a spooky mood, so I picked this up and yeah, let's talk about it. So What Moves the Dead is a retelling of The Fall of the House Usher by Edgar Allan Poe. And it tells the story of our main character, Alex, who gets a letter from his childhood friend, Madeline, who he hasn't seen in a while, that she's very sick and she is reaching out to him to come see her. So Alex gets on his horse and goes to the house usher, which is this gothic, crumbling, decaying, decrepit, you get the idea, house. And Madeline is there, she's very, very sick, and she's like pale white, she has all these white fibers on her arms, and she's like on the brink of death. And her brother Roderick is there as well. So they're all childhood friends, and the house is so dimly lit and it's musty. I actually ended up getting part of the plot spoiled for me because I looked up fan art because I wanted to see what the outside of the house looked like or what people imagined it looked like so I could have a better picture in my head, which I should not have done because I got part of it spoiled for me, but it's okay. Outside of the manor is this dark, murky lake that just gives off this horrible energy and there are all these hares, like rabbits, um, that don't run away and they just kind of stare at you when you walk by. So it's this really ominous, creepy vibe. There's also a mushroom motif, like a fungal motif going on, which kind of reminded me a little bit of Mexican Gothic. And the fungal imagery that happens towards the end of the book, I'm not gonna spoil it, but just some of that imagery is sticking with me. Like, I don't know if I can eat a mushroom again. Like, oh my God. So it was really great and I liked unraveling what was going on with Madeline. I didn't feel super attached to any of the characters necessarily, but I did like the ambiance, the creepiness of 
the situation and I was thoroughly disgusted by some of what was going on. So that's, that's a good thing. <laughs> I haven't decided if I'm going to pick up the second one yet. I might. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed it. It wasn't the most amazing thing I've ever read, but it's a short, snappy, sweet, ominous gothic retelling of Edgar Allan Poe. It did exactly what I thought it was going to do. And I will never eat a mushroom again. Oh, I'm just remembering some of the descriptions happening with, oh my gosh. This book reminded me of this moment with Benji where he had a plant in my bedroom and it sprouted this little mushroom. And I was telling Benji to get the plant out because I didn't want like spores or something. I don't know. I'm not too versed in mycology, but at the same time, a documentary was on the TV about like the fungal kingdom. For whatever reason, it was a crazy coincidence. I was like, Benji, there's spores. And Benji was like, no, it's fine. And at the same time, the documentary on the TV was talking about a specific mushroom saying like, billions of deadly spores fill the air. And it was just, I was like, Benji, take it out. <laughs> so what moves the dead? It did its job and I liked it. So next up, I read Coraline by Neil Gaiman. I don't know if you're like me and you watched the movie when you were younger and you were scarred by the mom and by the button eyes, but like that stuck with me. That really, really stuck with me. I wish I hadn't seen the movie before I read this book because it would have blown me away. Even though it's written for all ages and it's meant to be accessible for anyone, it really felt super mature to me, honestly. So if you're not familiar with Coraline, it tells the story of our main character, Coraline, who is a young girl and her family moves into a new apartment. And while exploring, Coraline finds this door and she goes through it and behind it is an exact replica of her house with a mom and a dad that look just like hers, but they have buttons for eyes. And the, the world there is like infinitely more interesting. Her toy box is filled with these toys that move and fly. And her mom bakes, her other mom, bakes these uh, delicious meals and they want her to stay. They're like, Coraline, stay with us forever. But she's like, no, I can't stay. And so it sets up this really creepy development of her other mom and her other family trying to get her to stay in this alternate house. Things quickly unravel and develop and become extra creepy, which is very surprising considering it's for all ages. What I thought was interesting about this book is that it's very matter of fact and you're not in Coraline's head at all. It's not an omniscient perspective. It's just very much like Coraline said this and this happened and then Coraline said this. Like you don't really know exactly what's going on in her head a lot of the time. And I wonder if that's because the book itself is more for all ages. So it's kind of has that structure did that make any sense? I'm not sure if it did. The book itself is so effortlessly unsettling. Like Neil Gaiman does an amazing job at fitting in so much storytelling and so much creepy imagery into that many pages while also making it very accessible to anyone of all ages. Like the language itself and the storytelling, it's not hard to follow or hard to read. It's really impressive how he combines all of that into such a great story, really. I, I still wish I hadn't seen the movie because this would have really surprised me. And I do think that the movie was very faithful to the book, which is pretty great. I also highly recommend Coraline if you're trying to get into reading and you like things on the creepier side, but you don't know what to read because it's short, sweet, and a really good time. Good job, Neil Gaiman. You, you killed that. So next up, I read the first book in the Murderbot Diaries series. <laughs> that sounds so funny, but... Um, the book is called All Systems Red. All Systems Red tells the story of our protagonist who is a robot and it is a security robot who pretty much accompanies these surveyors onto a planet and they're surveying the planet for whatever business related reasons, um, taking samples of rocks, water, things like that. And the security bot is protecting it from potential hazardous uh, fauna, and things like that. It's told in first person from the perspective of the security unit who calls himself Murderbot. And he has actually hacked his governing module, which is what makes him obey the humans. So he can really do whatever he wants, but he doesn't want anyone to find out that he has hacked his governing unit and then scrap him for parts. So he's playing along as this security unit who is taking the orders and doing whatever the humans say, but really he has free will. And in his free time, he has actually hacked his system and downloaded a bunch of television shows, essentially. And he's just like binging television shows whenever he gets the chance. Pretty soon on the planet, things go pretty badly and Murderbot is forced to protect his humans. And then things go from there. I really like robots. I think robot stories raise 
really interesting questions about values, about robot sentience, about what it means to be alive. And I think Murderbot uh, really makes you think because it has feelings and it is a great protagonist, has a big personality. It's very antisocial and just wants to ignore the humans and watch TV shows all day, which I think is so funny. I'm just obsessed with Murderbot. And I really love the relationships that developed between Murderbot and its humans that it's supposed to be protecting. My one gripe about this book is that there is so much talk about like the systems and the feed and the different feeds and like all the technology going on and like, oh, I sent you this through the feed, but my but my drones picked up the thing and I pushed it through the, the UI and like that kind of thing. So it was a lot to kind of keep track of. But overall, I thought it was a very, very interesting. Definitely gonna read the rest of these solely for Murderbot. I relate to it and I'm curious how it's gonna develop, especially after the end of this book, which I'm not gonna spoil, but I wanna know what happens next. What's next for Murderbot? I definitely recommend All Systems Red if a deadly antisocial robot sounds of interest to you. <laughs> so lastly, I read this book Benji bought himself called The Hole, and boy was this a journey. <laughs> the Hole is pretty short. I read it in one sitting, and it made me feel like I was going crazy a little bit. <laughs> so the plot of The Hole is our main character, Asa. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, her and her husband move to the countryside because the husband's job relocated him. So they move into the house next to his parents' house, the husband's parents' house, and they don't have to pay rent because the house belongs to the parents as well. Our main character, she left her job and she doesn't have to work anymore. So she is really just at home all day. She doesn't have a car. She spends her days just walking to the supermarket and walking back. And it's the summertime, so it's super hot and there are tons of cicadas, just constant cicada buzzing sounds. And really our story starts when the main character walks by the riverbank and this big black wolf-like animal that doesn't look like any animal that exists um, is in front of her and she follows it and then falls into this hole that is exactly her shape. So just her head was sticking out like right here and she can't really get out. So that begins this fever dream of a story that honestly made me thirsty and it made me feel kind of crazy and it made me very confused. This book definitely has tons of symbolism and I can tell there are themes about gender roles, about uh, kind of, you know, the bored housewife and the dangers of conforming to gender roles and things like that. It is so heavy with symbolism that I couldn't even parse the meaning of every little thing just because, wow, it is such a fever dream. And parts of the whole were very creepy, honestly. I liked the creepy parts a lot, but the ending left me super puzzled and I felt like I had just woken up from a fever dream, like it was crazy. I'm really interested in looking up an analysis of this book because I can tell that there's so much there that I just didn't grasp because wow. Also, this book was translated from Japanese, but I thought the translation was super easy to follow and I think they did a great job at that. But yeah, I really felt like my reality was unraveling with her reality at the same time. It was really wild. I, I also don't really know how I feel about it. Um, I think I need to let it sit for a little bit. It's been like two days, but I don't know how I feel and I don't know how I'm gonna feel. But if you're looking for something short, this is, this is pretty short and definitely something that'll make you think and make you feel a little confused, then I recommend this to you. <laughs> that was a crazy book to end on, but yeah, those are the books that I have. I wanna thank you guys for watching and for sticking around and for commenting. I love hearing your thoughts on these books and I love sharing my thoughts with you guys. So this has been really, really great. I'm so thankful for all of you guys and it's been super, super fun getting to do this. If you've read any of these books, let me know your thoughts. I'm super interested. I love reading the comments and I will see you guys potentially next week. I'm not quite sure but I will see you whenever I see you. So I'll catch you guys later. Happy reading. Bye.